Thank it's you. interesting that the first thing uh, I think I picked that you learned from Kenya is uh, Kisi people. <laughs> are we that famous? Are, they, are you Kisi? No, no, no. Uh, you can round me off to the nearest Kisi. <laughs> so I think before the show, you asked me if I was, uh, the, you asked the audience members if I had, uh, if there's one country I hadn't been to. Yes, yes, yes. And they asked if I had been to Kisi. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. then you also asked about the witchcraft in Tanzania. Yes, yes. So I was in Tanzania, and uh, I don't believe the witchcraft was that strong because I tried to go to Kisi. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I bought a flight ticket to Kisi. Yes. And then uh, when I got to the airport at... Uh, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, they said, unfortunately, your flight has cancelled. Because apparently uh, the flights were competing with airspace, with all of the witches <laughs> and the wizards that were on brooms in Kisi. So <laughs> we could not land the plane. So that's why I could not visit. So unfortunately, I'm still waiting for the witchcraft to tone down a bit. Before. <laughs> but, but they... they... <laughs> But from the rumors, and this is rumors from haters, uh, is that they only fly at night. Kisi Airways, that is, let's call it Kisi Airways. They only fly at night. They could have flown you there during the day. No, but there's so many of them that every day is night because you can't see anything. <laughs> They're blocking the sun. Ah, you can be a professional hater. <laughs> And Kisi guys, uh, we love you so much. This is not hate speech. We are just having fun. Mnajot no apenda sana. Your turn is over. You know, Kenya, Kenyans have this culture of uh, uh, there's a community takes the mantle of being made fun of uh, over a period of time, and then people move on to the next other, community. to another another community. Uh, we had. So we're uh, going to get through 44. Yes, 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 we are going to get through 44 because. Uh, is there enough time to get through? In Kenya. No, no, no. Right now, we need to go through all of them and start making jokes. No, no, no. I, I, I don't. Kisis have taken the longest, I think. Sindio, we, Sindio, <laughs> Luyas, Luyas took the mantle for like four years. Oh. Uh, Kikuyus are standard. Kik <laughs> for, for every community that people make fun of, Kikuyus, uh, we have standard stereotypes that we have accepted as a country. Do they uh, pay extra for that sort of coverage? No, 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 no. no. They, they, you can't just ignore them. Okay. And they come up with these new studio types. So whose turn day. is it now? Who's, who's uh, the current guys? Kisi are just logging out. Okay. <laughs> Kisi's are just log logging out. Do we know out. who's coming in? Kambas, Kambas, Kambas. Ah. They are in. They are, they are, they are coming in slowly. Sindio? Uh, people, people have started, ah, Kamba, 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 yes. Luyas was the hardest. People went hard on the Luyas. Uh, Kisi served the longest because there was a point where if you just say Kisi, people just laugh because... <laughs> Kisi you is funny. Kisi. And the good thing is, except for Kikuyus, uh, when, um, when Kambas come through, uh, when Kisis are in, witchcraft has to be associated with the, the winning community. Uh, Luyas were, 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 were on the spot for eating. Just for eating? Yes. They hold eating competitions every day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Standard procedures. Okay, and what, what are they competing? What, the fastest person to finish Ugali or what is? No, I, I don't even think it's about speed. It's about quantity for the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> so currently they're somewhere eating right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In okay. South Africa, uh, uh, how much food uh, can an adult finish, like plate-wise? Uh, two plates maybe? Two One plates. And a half, depending, yeah, who they are. Ah, okay. You've met Ugali, right? Yes, yes. Bas. What's the biggest Ugali you have finished? This ah, much. You've squared this big. But not the brown one, the white one. The white one? Yes. You are a lawyer. You are a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you are a lawyer baby. So for, for a lawyer well, baby, those are the based guys that, the are, jokes, that are eating it with, uh, with uh, Mayai. No, no, Ugali Mayai is for bachelors, standard. Ah. From, from the ages of 18. So Langata boys. No, Ruisambo. So, <laughs> from the age from the age of eighteen to twenty-seven, Kenyan men uh, live. You see how the Bible says, "Man shall not live on bread alone." Eighteen to twenty-seven, ugali mayai. <laughs> they only change the diet on dates to impress women. <laughs> yes. So these are all Kenyan men. All Kenyan men. Okay. All no, Kenyan men. Standard. If you see anyone else lying to you that they ate rice, they ate chapati, they are lying. 
got it. Got yes. It. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> that's culture one one. What have you learned? What else have you observed apart from uh, in your experience? How long have you been in the country? I've been here for about three weeks now. Three weeks? Yes. And yes. you even speak Swahili, some, you drop some bits like you've been here for a minute. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to fit in. Ah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. I'm just waiting until they give me my passport. I, just, I don't know if I've done enough. Oh, as in Kenya? Yes, yes, yes. South Africa is doing bad now. We don't have electricity, so that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even surprised. We've got so uh, many lights here. What a waste. I feel like I should take one of them home. No, for real. Interesting. I would have linked that to something else, uh, running away from South Africa because of black, but <clears throat> very sensitive conversation. We'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, in, 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 uh, what's your favorite country, by the way, you've visited? Because you've traveled quite a lot. Ah, uh, I think I fall in love with almost every country I go to. Ah. Uh. Yes. Like, before I arrived here, I had a Tanzanian band. And then after two days, I got a Kenyan one. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Bad candidate for marriage. <laughs> 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 and, and for your experience in Kenya, um, uh, Vafa did a very funny video with Nick Bigfish, who we've had on the, uh, as a guest on the show some time back. About, uh, for those, uh, you've seen it on the first part of the show, what goes into your mind when you see someone, as in, uh, would, you, would, would that skit work in a South African context? Or that also is one aspect of who Kenyans are as a society. You, you, with that, with that skit in, uh, in particular, yes. oh, I spent I spent a couple of days with Nick Bigfish. Yes, and uh, for me, it was almost one of the most beautiful way to get to know Kenyans in uh, in a situation where they're unprepared for. So uh, for me, that was uh, that was really interesting. And the first comment I made is that this won't work in South Africa because you will get killed before you can finish the skit. So there, it's not, it's not safe to make certain jokes. But over here, I was surprised at how far we can take it, and our lives were not in danger. Really? Yeah. Uh, dangerous in terms of the guy finding out you are pranking him, and there is no money, or danger because South Africa does not support content creators like that? No, I think, it's, well, well, that one wasn't so, uh, wasn't so dangerous. I'm just thinking... There's other ones where maybe he threw some rocks above and then was yes, saying, hey, yes, it's yes, mano yes. mano. And then yes. people run. <laughs> people yes. are running. If you do that, there will be a security guard from the other side of the road that will Shoot probably him. gun you down because they're like, hey, what is going on over here? Ah. So it's like, uh, it's, uh, or certain people may not take the, so it's, it's a little bit more risky with, uh, with that. Or somebody could rob you in you doing the, the sketch or something. You also did a sketch about robbing, now that you mentioned robbing, within Jugush, where he tries to snatch your phone, right? We assume that South Africa is kidogo. I don't know. Let me not go there. But uh, how safe are you using your phone in a street in South Africa? Let's start with that. I think you're, like, I don't think, I, I haven't been robbed since I was probably 11. Because we, I th if, you, if you're in South Africa, you know where to go and where not to go and what to do and what not to do. So, uh, are you saying that thieves in South Africa have boundaries? <laughs> <laughs> like we d we don't steal in certain areas. There is exactly. So I think the it's it's focused on. So if you if you do something stupid, then you, like if you go to a you can't walk in the CBD at night. Like that's just one thing. Mm -hmm. So I think in every country in the world there are sort of boundaries of where the line lies. So if you know where the line lies, and you know where you're safe or when you're not. Like CBD, like in South African towns, you can't walk at night. No, you can't walk at night. So you all should. South African CBDs are luduli that by, by default. <laughs> Is that a place over here you can't walk at night? Yes, 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 yes. Would I get robbed? Uh, you can try. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a good try? way to go and practice my own criminality if I want to rob people? You, you can, you can, you can. Okay. You can. But you would make a very good client for, <laughs> sana sana, for optical reasons. I also think that the crime here in, in Kenya is like your criminals here only want to do the crime. Like they, it's more opportunistic crime. You just want to steal something in peace. So that you can feel good about it. Yes, but like in South Africa, we give you the whole experience. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we give you the crime, the physical harm, and the trauma afterwards. It's just... 
the full package. The full, full package, yes. Yeah. I feel that you guys are getting ripped off with your crime over here. <laughs> Very poor ah. quality over here, I think. Uh, <laughs> I say the person who's not been robbed since you were 11. How are you alive, as if? I, I do the robbing. That is my job. <laughs> <laughs> Kenyans take things very seriously. Vafa is actually a civil <laughs> engineer at master's level. So unless that's what you used to rob people, over quoting. I see nobody is clapping for that. Is that is everybody educated in this? <laughs> is that not? Yeah, we have medical engineers. Ebu, pigeni makofi bana. And I think that's something else I was very interested to to bring up uh -huh. first before we discuss the most fun. Or, part of this conversation, people. Uh, please, I can't, move, I can't move on from the idea of a civil engineer very comfortably doing comedy, right? Was this like a choice? Like, I just want to do comedy, I'm doing civil engineering for fun. Between civil engineering and comedy, which do you do for fun? You know, when, when you get fired more than nine times at the job, <laughs> then maybe it's time to give up that job and find something else. So. So I was not a good engineer, to put it short. Bridges At master's falling. level? No, they were just handing it out. They felt bad for me. They were just... <laughs> they they what felt does sorry for you. Ah. And gave you a civil engineering gig. Well, on a, no, on a serious note, I... Uh, so I studied, I did. But I was just trying to find out how can I... How can I disappoint my parents? Oh. Further. Ah, oh, nice. <laughs> so you became... So I was pushing... It's, it's all a prank. It's just one big. No, so I, uh, I, I studied civil engineering because that's what my parents wanted me to do. I got my master's. I worked for a couple of years. And then, uh, and then I decided, no, I want to do this comedy thing. So it helps at least that I've got something to fall back on. But this is something now I'm passionate about. I don't do any engineering anymore. For real? Yes, 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 yes. And um, do, so, so this means you don't do comedy for money per se. You don't, as in, you don't, you don't, you're not a comedian because you need the money. Because your parents want you to want, uh, would want you to be a civil engineer for financial security, as most parents want. Yes, yes. So right now I've got the comedy to a point where it is paying. So if I, if I want to make it a job, I can't be reckless and say. So it got to a level where I had some savings, so I knew there was some time for me to get better at the comedy. Okay. And then now the comedy is at a point where... It does pay. Uh-huh. Yeah. And co through comedy, you've traveled a lot. Yes, yes. And... Um, not to Kisi, though. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> Kisi, you can go by road. Uh, <laughs> in fact, you can go practice how fast uh, you can move around the world. But then, uh, in terms of the cultures uh, that you have mentioned, in fact, just um, a few, about Sweden, uh, I, I don't, that also stuck in my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, how long it takes... And this particular element, how long it takes before someone invites you to their house? Ah, uh, yeah. So I was in Sweden for six months. Yes. And, uh, you know, as soon as I got there, the first thing I realized is that people are not as friendly as Africans. So I was born and brought up in South Africa, and all I know is, like, African people. So when, uh, when I got there, initially... You know, people will take maybe four or five months before they want to stay alone with you in a room. Like, it, I don't know if it, I was African or what, why they didn't want to stay with me. Maybe they heard about my criminal background. But uh, it was... Uh, so, so during that time, I, fi I first found it a little bit like why maybe they don't like me. But then I also realized that uh, people in Sweden just do things slightly differently. Like in Sweden, uh, in Africa, we say hi to everybody. You greet everybody. Hi, how are you? Uh, you ask, even if you don't know the person, you are saying hi to them. Yes. In Sweden, even if you know the person, you don't say hi to them. You unless ignore you, them. Need, you ignore them. You move, unless you need something from them. So you could pass somebody on the side of the road and you don't say hi, unless you need something. If you say hi to them, they're like, what do you want? Yes, yes, yes. Like it gets, so... It's a, it, it was a weird way of how they socialize. And I, at first, thought it was unfriendly until a couple of weeks in, I was like, oh, this is maybe just how they do things. You know, in Sweden, they did not have COVID. I mean, like Tanzania. 
Uh, no, uh, no, they just didn't uh, like they didn't have any they didn't have any, any COVID. Any COVID. They were, they were the I think it was Sweden, Tanzania, maybe another country. That, they didn't have COVID or they oh, didn't no, no. lock down. They didn't lock down. Okay. They didn't. For them, COVID did not exist. So I went there during COVID, and uh, I saw that these Swedish people actually they they isolate themselves and stay like they don't really uh, socialize socialize so much. So I found out that they've actually been social distancing for hundreds of years before. <laughs> so when COVID came, they were like, ah, come on, this is That's what we have been we doing anyway. So what is this new thing? So we, we turned Swedish. The whole, the whole world turned Swedish during COVID. <laughs> so yeah, in, the, in, in their sense, it didn't actually affect them so much because they weren't very communal sort of people. And did you have, uh, uh, which one worked for you? Like uh, ab getting absorbed into the culture um, or um, trying to force your way into them? Like, did you find it awkward? Did you have to stop saying hi to people because it was awkward in Sweden? Or um, that also affected how you do things? Yeah, it, I, I, so I, I like to adapt to wherever I am. So also for me, before I came here, I was in Tanzania. And uh, Tanzanian people are so polite. They're so nice. And when you come here to Kenya and people are just so direct, like they're like, if they need a phone charger, they're like, give me the charger. <laughs> they don't even ask. They don't even. They, they remove your phone at 5%. <laughs> or, yes. Whereas in, in Tanzania, it's like, uh, uh, Samahani, and they're like very politely and everything. They ask for something. Over here in Kenya, they'll be like, you're wasting my time. Just give me the charger now. <laughs> So also, Tanzanians, they beg for small things. Like, they are well, beggars. You, exactly. You see it as begging. For them, it's just humility. So it's just, it's, sometimes it's just like a perspective. So when, when I came here, I first thought that, no, Kenyan people are rude. But to, to Kenyans, that is not like a rude way. It is just how to communicate directly. In fact, if you take too long, you're wasting somebody's time. So that's disrespectful. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, for me, for me, I try to, when I go to a new place, I don't want to judge how people do things. Okay. Uh, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, differences and similarities, uh, neither of them really matter, you know. Okay. In terms of connecting with people, we, uh, you know, similarities bring us closer together. For example, uh, Bantu languages. So in South Africa, we've got Bantu languages that have got similar words to Swahili. Mm -hmm. And there we can relate with people in this region. So similarities get us connected. But I also, I also think that differences cause like curiosity. And that also creates interest in one another and where we can learn from one another. So being able to notice our similarities and our differences makes it a whole lot more enjoyable Okay. experience when you go somewhere okay. instead of saying that we are because we are not the same we don't get along okay or you know because because we are different we can't we can never agree on something so um, so when i when i have that sort of mindset when i go to some place it makes it actually a whole lot more enjoyable when i'm there i'm like oh okay this is you know even even in the same country for example people in mombasa and people in nairobi are very different but we are stay, they're staying in the same country. Africans in general are somehow concerned, especially after the, the, the xenophobia attacks that uh, Nini somehow... Uh, what was that about? So I think xenophobia is also um, majority of... Sometimes it's, uh, it's created... Oh, this, sorry, this is my belief. It's not uh, 100%. So um, sometimes I believe it's used as a political tool. For example, uh, if they believe that the ruling party is not creating enough jobs, then they will say and blame that the immigration of people coming into the country are taking jobs from South Africans. So amongst the masses, it creates some sort of anger. Um, but when you look at the, the fact of xenophobia, it's not, it's not a uh, thing that is particular to South Africa. If you, if you look at, uh, for example, Brexit, for them, for England wanting to leave Europe, they were worried about the Polish people coming into England and taking their jobs. The United States doesn't want Mexicans to cross the wall and take their jobs. So it can be called differently. Yes, I mean, the outlet 
South Africa is also a little bit triggered, I think, with our past traumas. So violence is, tends to be quite a strong outlet. Um, and it's actually targeted in the, in the wrong... So, I mean, we have, we have like Somali shop owners in the townships over there. And they're selling stuff over there. They have their own shops. And often those shops are targeted and burnt. But now, if you decided you want to create a shop, you could open up your own shop. It's not stopping you from opening up the shop. Okay. But now you will say that that person is taking your job. So I think it's a lot of built up anger, maybe about service delivery and a lot of other things. Um, South Africans views of say, so xenophobia almost does not become a problem in a certain class bracket. So most Kenyans actually working in South Africa, are either in tech or in engineering or accounting or finance. So they're within a bracket where they are they're safe. That they're safe in a way. Yes. So xenophobia is from Django guys. <laughs> what does that mean? What does Django mean? Construction workers. <laughs> yeah, you know, in a way, it's uh, it, it's more concentrated in a certain class. But that I mean, that topic is is quite. There's Sensitive. there's a lot of layers to it. Yes, yes, yes. If you want to actually unpack what the real reason is. South Africa is defined in Kenya for the most part by Nelson Mandela. He's then not there anymore. The, I don't know if you've seen this. He's still, he's, he's still alive. His statue is there. His spirit is still alive. Uh, we have Brenda Fassi. She's uh, also not there anymore. Your yes, name yes, is people. <laughs> yeah, and I'm telling you what defines South ah, Africa okay. for us. And um, Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Uh -huh. Like uh, Lucky Dube. <laughs> but then you guys are cold, Bana. How do you kill your superstar like that, Bana? Uh, but you are not a thief then, right? When Lucky Dube died. No, 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 no. Okay. I hadn't started yet. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, South African culture has been sold to us through uh, some of the biggest musicians from South Africa. And then, Ile uh, movie South Africa in Itwaji? Sarafina. Ah. That's South Africa for us. In fact, we know how violent you are from Sarafina. That's why we prefer to fight you on Twitter. We'll annihilate you on Twitter. When I, look at, like that, when I look at that now, I'm like, was this Mando Mano? Probably it was shot in Kenya. <laughs> Are you sure that... Uh, the, the Sarafina Nini. Did you get a chance to watch that, actually? I did. But it, it's also, for me, so, it's so surprising that sometimes you guys know more about our culture than we know about our culture. From three songs and a movie. <laughs> exactly. No, sometimes the depth in which... Uh, you know, I've heard friends, like, for example, from Burundi that stay in South Africa. They'll be singing songs to the lyrics. Maybe even they're not pronouncing, the, they change the lyrics to maybe to French or to Swahili or something else. And, but they're, speaking, they, they're singing the, the songs in a tone, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is almost better than us. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, this is also something with, like, our, our education system in South Africa. We actually don't... The, and this is something I've been, I've been thinking about. We don't learn too much about our history. And I don't know for what reason. I think maybe they're afraid that because it was quite a dark history and it's quite recent, that it may cause some problems. Mm. But for most general South Africans that are growing up now in this generation, we know very little about our independence and okay. that history. Okay. And um, I think but like when, when you, now just going back to your question about what can what can Kenyans expect? For for me, like Nairobi feels a whole lot like Johannesburg. Same sort of, like Nairobi is for business. Like you can't come here looking for love. Like <laughs> you've learned that in three weeks. Yes. yes what yes. have they done to you? <laughs> you've been to Raisambu. Where has Nick Bigfish taken you? Where's Raisambu? That's a strong statement that you can't come looking for love. Have you found Where love has in Nick uh, Nairobi? Taking you? No, I need to know, where has Nick, Nick taken you? Well, on the streets. You can't find love on the streets. Sidio. So where, where, should I, where do I need to go in Nairobi to find love? Wap, you go? Wap, wap, where is love? <laughs> uh, no, Roisambu, there is no love in Roisambu. Roisambu is still CBD, so love is business. They even have... In Roisambu, they even have teal numbers in the bedroom. <laughs> you pay here, yes. So, and, had, and then can I deduct that from, can I get the tax back when I leave uh, with that slip that I... No, no, no. You're busy at Roisambu, you're going to tax returns. <laughs> no, they don't file for that. 
Oh, okay, mm. okay, okay. Yes, but you can't find love. You you are about to say something. So Confess. I think I think the, the the culture in in South Africa in in Johannesburg is a whole lot like Nairobi. It's very like business orientated. People are always trying to hustle, trying to get something, trying to create a living for themselves. Do you still maintain that in terms of infrastructure, South Africa is better than Kenya? You guys are wasteful. <laughs> you see, we, we are very efficient. The TV's in the house. Unless it's being stolen, then we allow it to be. <laughs> <laughs> but that is only in transit. Uh, <laughs> ah, Niloambia Vafa is very good vibes. Zopi makofi yake.